Organize Me Radio, episode 85, Intentional Living. I'm Naima Ford Goldson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford Goldson, and today's guest is an organizing expert, an author, and she is the host of the Make Room Show. Please welcome Jennifer Ford Barry. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited for you to be here too. And I can't wait to learn a little bit more about intentional living. But first, can you tell everyone how you got your start in the organizing industry? <laughs> well, it's been a long time ago by now, but basically I will mark 9-11 as a big turning point, not only for the world, but for me as well. I was pregnant with my first child. I was working at a radio station. I had been in corporate America right out of college. And I thought, this is what I want to do. But I was feeling super unfulfilled. And I think the fact that there was so much upheaval in the world, plus being pregnant, I started to rethink my life and what I wanted to do and how I wanted to wake up every morning. And so I decided after a lot of soul searching and trying to talk myself out of organizing at the time because nobody, I didn't know anybody doing this. I didn't know professional organizers. I knew a couple of well-known people doing it and that was it. And so I kept thinking to myself, you know what I really would love to do if I could do anything, I would love to help people get organized. And I realized that I've been good at this since I was a little girl. I remember asking my grandma, every time I was at her house, can I organize your jewelry? Can I organize your clothes? I mean, what five-year-old says that, right? (laughs) Right. And um, it just kept going. And so I wanted to do it, but I was afraid because I didn't know anybody similar to me. And then finally, I just said, you know what, what do I have to lose? Like, let's just give it a shot, you know? And I did, I started that um, just kind of going with friends and family and former coworkers doing their closets. And then it led to a weekly newsletter And then that led to my first book. And so once my first book was published, I feel like my career really took off. It gave me kind of a platform and kind of some accolades for people to take me seriously on the subject. And um, it just, I was very, very blessed to be honest with you. That first book really was a, you know, top seller and it just led to more book deals. And so it just kind of took a snowball effect after that one choice of like, let's just give it a shot. Let's see what can happen. What is interesting about my story though, is I thought I was just going to be a professional organizer. I never planned to be an author. I never planned to be a speaker. I never planned to be a podcast host. I didn't realize how much I would feel passionate about this subject And over the years of working with so many people, I realized that what even, you know, drives me more is to help people clear out the clutter so they can find their own purpose. Because I know that this is my purpose, but I want everybody to have that feeling of waking up in the morning and getting excited to go to work or getting excited for a project or, you know, just knowing that they're living out their life exactly the way they were supposed to live it when they got to this earth. And so that's my bigger why now, which makes this career even more exciting for me than just organizing stuff. I think it's great that you mentioned all of the different things that you do as an organizing expert. So Mm -hmm. it's like professional organizing isn't just one thing and professional organizers aren't just one thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I love how you mentioned all the, you know, being an author and, you know, being a speaker and all the different things that you do. Um, and you know, things that led you to where you are today. And I have to say, not only do we have our middle name in common, uh, (laughs) Ford, right. Um, I, I also have a radio background, so I think that's funny how you mentioned that, you know, you started in, you were in radio, you know, you decided that, you know, you wanted to become a professional organizer. I was in radio too. So, so which, which, um, company were you with? Okay. So I did, um, in it's in Nebraska, NRG Media. I did promotions, okay. 
and then I did CNN radio. So it was kind of like night and day. Yes. And I went from CNN radio to Radio Disney to promotions because CNN radio was too much for me. It was too heavy for me. I wanted to have fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Disney sounds like way more fun. Right, it was. It definitely was. I love that. So today we are talking about intentional living. What is intentional living? How can people adopt that practice? So to me, it's, I feel like a lot of people are just kind of living on autopilot. They're not really deciding first what they want their life to look like and then creating it. And so I'm constantly working with people that are saying, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed out, I don't, I'm just like on this hamster wheel, I can't get off. For me, intentional living is the first, the decision. Like even before the decision, honestly, is the space to give yourself time to decide. Like just even if you have to take a couple hours and go to a park or take a trip or something where you can get away from your everyday life and just say, you know what? If my life could be anything, what would I want it to look like? And then you have to use your imagination, right? And like kind of what happened to me, you might try to talk yourself out of it, but you have to be brave and courageous and say, you know what? If it if this is what I really want, if I really deep down realize that I want my life to look this way, let's back up and see what are the steps I can do every day to create that. And so you decide what you want it to look like. Then you create your top, let's say, five priorities that will help you keep that life growing in the way you want it to be. And then you have to look at your time and time block for those priorities. So let me give you an example. If you say, okay, I want to start, you know, I want to become an author. That's something I've always dreamed of doing but it's writing a book is such a big project. You can say, well, I'm going to make writing a book this year in 2024, a priority. And then I'm going to look at my calendar. and I'm going to block out times, you know, a couple hours here, an hour there, maybe 20 minutes on a Saturday. It depends what you have to offer. And I'm going to dedicate myself to those time blocks. And I'm not going to let anybody else take that time away from me. Because what happens is you say you want to write a book or you want to start a business or whatever your dream is. And then every single day, there's going to be someone and something trying to take use up your time, right? That's just how life goes. But if we can step back and say, nope, one of my priorities this year is writing a book, then you have to, you know, that's your priority and it helps you say no to other things that don't align with that priority. So over time, all these things that you want to have happen in your life, you are in the driver's seat and that's where intentionality comes in. You're being intentional. You're saying, you know what? This is what I want to happen and this is what it's going to take to make that happen. And so I feel like it's very empowering to know that you don't have to wonder if you're ever going to make a dream come true or if you're ever going to live out your purpose. You know, even if it's a tiny minuscule step every week, you're doing something about it instead of just hoping and wishing it happens. So, okay, you mentioned all the distractions in life. Yes, life is so distracting. So me, for example, I have two boys. Uh, my oldest son is 12. He's in middle school now. Mm -hmm. Both my kids go to different schools. He plays tennis. You know, he plays tennis like four days a week now. Um, my youngest son is nine and he has autism and is nonverbal. So he has all types of therapies that he has to go to. He does therapy five days a week, different types of mm -hmm. therapy, ABA, speech, occupational therapy. And sometimes, you know, I have goals, but then I feel like the distractions of life kind of get in the way. And when I have time to work on something, I'm so exhausted. So what do you do to assist people or families in, um, in making that time for what mm -hmm. really matters most mm -hmm. to them? So if you, you know, the thing about time to me is exciting because it's the one thing we've all been given equally. So there's really, we, we to say I don't have time is a lie. You do have time. It's how you're spending your time that matters. So I really think it's important to look at your priorities first. And, you know, for example, there's a difference between if your top priority in this season in your life is to be at every tennis match, then your top priority can't be Tuesday nights when there's a tennis match. You can't also be on a board, right, that meets on Tuesday night. So because you've decided this is your priority during this time of your child's life, then it helps you decide what isn't a priority. Okay. So as far as time goes, I think with women, we're just so, we have so many hats. We have so much responsibility. 
were the mostly the managers of the entire family, the entire household. And we have to be able to say no to things in order to say yes to other things that are matter to us. And we don't, we can't feel guilty. And it's weird because sometimes just giving some a woman the permission and saying, guess what? You, you can say no to that. You don't have to like go to this party on Saturday just because there's a bunch of moms there and you feel like you want, you know, you have to go or they're going to hate you. You don't have to do it. You can stay home and snuggle your kids on the couch. And it's like, oh yeah, you're right. I can. Because the thing about priorities is that seasons change in life and maybe tennis is a priority to you right now because your son's young, but then in a blink of an eye, you'll be like me where your kids are in college and you'll be missing that. And so I feel like for women, the biggest thing you can do, especially as a mom, is be intentional with your children so that you don't have regrets when they're gone. And I think that this this year being a first time year for me being an empty nester, I am so happy that I revolved my life around my kids. I revolved my career around my kids because if I didn't, I would be filled with regret right now because even though people tell you it goes fast, you'd have no idea until it's over. You're like, what just happened? It was like a train just went by your whole life and you want to get back on the train so bad and you can't. So I think that to answer your question, just be honest with yourself of what's important. Don't feel like you have to be like every other mom or every other wife or every other business owner. You get to do it your way and you don't have to answer to anybody for it. I love that. Okay. Thanks for giving me permission. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I think, Go to all the tennis matches. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because I think sometimes as moms, you need to hear that, right? You need to hear that it's okay what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. your, your career will be there. You know, yes. it's okay to pivot and do certain things during this time and then focus on other things later. You don't have to try to do it all at one time. No, I've pivoted so many times I've lost, I've lost count. And a lot of times when I've pivoted, it's because of what I was going through personally as a mom. I mean, to be blatantly honest, if I look back, even we rebranded my podcast a few, um, two years ago from the 29 minute mom that I had forever to the make room show. It was because I knew I was going into this empty nester season and I was getting a little bit scared about it, but I'd said, you know what? I want to embrace it. I'm really not the 29 minute mom anymore. I'm the make room mom because I'm like making room for new opportunities in my own life and in my own home. And I decided that I hated the words empty nest. I wanted to call it an open nest. And I was like, you know what? I can embrace this season and I can shed who I used to be and move on. And I can still do the same work. So how does living intentionally, um, guide your approach to organizing or simplifying spaces? It's literally everything to do with it for me. I believe that we've all been sent here empty handed. We leave empty handed. So why are we revolving our entire life around physical stuff? Now, I'm not a minimalist. I have stuff in my home. But I'm very intentional about what's in my home because every single thing you bring into your home requires some amount of STEM, space, time, energy, money. You're giving away these precious resources to things, right? We give it to people too, but we give it to things. So when you get to a point in your life where your house is overwhelming and it's not a peaceful sanctuary and you're stressed out when you walk in, some stuff in there is taking away too much of your STEM and it needs to go. And so it, I think, you know, clutter is a huge distraction. So when you are literally intentional about what's in your home, then it's easier to maintain and manage that home. And I'm sure you've experienced going into a home when someone has passed on and they have all this stuff left behind. I've done that so many times that I try to remind other people like this isn't going with you. So if it's stressing you out, it's not worth keeping. You want stuff to be in your home that makes it look pretty and comfortable and it gives you good vibes and good energy and makes you happy. But other than that, a lot of it we don't need. So with this principle, what can people do to help reduce overwhelm? So again, the more stuff you have, the more overwhelm overwhelming it's going to be to deal with it. And so you kind of have to take a step back 
and say, what can I do to simplify each space? And this is not just rooms in your home. This is areas of your life. This is your time. This is your work schedule. But look back and say, what's like the main things that I want to keep? Because I go by these two questions when it comes to space. Do I love this and do I use this? If you love it, it's worth keeping. If you use it, it's worth keeping. But if you don't love it or use it, it's probably time to pass it on to somebody else. And I think that um, it's just kind of like, be that it's the word intentional just keeps sticking with me because you get to decide, right? And you don't have to keep things out of guilt. That's a big thing. You know, I'll hear somebody say, well, I can't get rid of that. My mother-in-law bought it for me. But your mother-in-law doesn't live here, you know? And so in the end, when you look at someone's life, when I'm walking through a home, somebody's passed on, I'm constantly thinking, did this stuff bring them joy? Did, was it worth the work? Was it worth the hours they put in to buy it? Was it worth the hours they put in to clean around it? Or was it just stuff to them? Because it's not worth it if it's not bringing you some sort of positive emotion instead of a negative emotion. And I feel like a lot of times clutter, when it starts to look cluttered, you feel negative emotion. So then for people who want to live intentionally, who want to simplify their spaces, who, you know, don't want to burden their family members, you know, with all the things that they have after they pass on for those people who, you know, have the intention to get organized, but they're not sure where to start. Mm -hmm. What do you suggest? What is your advice to them? My advice always is to start with the area that is bothering you the most. So if you walk in your mudroom and you're tripping over shoes every day and immediately getting home from work, you feel anger and resentment toward your family because the shoes are laying out, then that's a problem that there can be a solution for, right? We can figure out how to organize the shoes better. We can declutter. We can purge. If it's the kitchen counter, because when you have guests over, they see mail and school papers all over the counter and you feel shame or embarrassment, then let's start there. If you can't sleep at night because your bedroom is dusty and cluttered and you're not having a good night's rest, then let's start there. What area is causing you the most harm and the most aggravation and stress? If we start there and we clean up that area and we organize it, you're going to feel like a rush of good energy and you're going to start feel like, you know what? I can do this. Okay, what's the next what's the next problem I can fix? What's which is the next space I can organize because you are going to want more of that good feeling. So start with the area that's bothering you the most or maybe it's a a fight between you and your husband where he wants this one area fixed and you just don't care. But if you fixed it, a lot less fighting would happen. So let's there's what I'm saying is it's not worth it. It's not worth in your home to have so much stress and anxiety with a space that could be fixed and organized and decluttered. And if you don't know how to do it, that's why there's people like us, right? That know how to come in and help you. So ask for help. And if you can't hire a professional organizer, I'm sure there's somebody in your life that loves to do this, that would be more than willing to come over or barter, you know, maybe barter for babysitting or something like that. So how can people, um, cultivate a more mindful approach to their daily life. Oh, I love this. So, you know, we've heard it. It seems a little cliche, but it's so true. Your morning routine is everything. How you start your day is everything. Because if we can get this right, which is the hardest thing to manage and to declutter, right? That mental clutter is awful. So if we can get this right and get right in your head in the beginning of the day, then you can really see clear on what you want your path to be throughout the day. So what do I mean? I mean, actually sitting down in the morning, maybe you journal, maybe you read, maybe you meditate, whatever the thing is. I like to sit and look out the window when it's not nice out. And I like to sit on my porch when it is nice out and just take a few minutes to decide what do I want to accomplish today? And what what do I want my attitude to be about it? Maybe you're going into a meeting with somebody and you're like, let me get my head on straight. Let me get the right attitude. Um, I think morning routine is huge. I think time management is huge. Planning out your week in advance, not just letting life happen, but to actually say, here's my to-do list. And normally people hate their to-do list, right? Because it never ends unless you're dead. 
and looking at that and saying, what if, which one of these to do is can I conquer this week and deciding, but not actually just saying, oh, I, I need to do this sometime, but plugging it into your schedule. So really being like, figure out a routine. Maybe it's the morning routine. Maybe it's Friday afternoon, you plan out your following week. Maybe it's Sunday night, you plan out your week. Maybe you think of ways to make your week run smoother, like meal prep or deciding what the wardrobes are going to be for your family members. There's all sorts of ways to make your life just simpler, but also make sure that it runs smooth by being proactive. So besides the things that you just mentioned, do you have any other strategies that help people to prioritize um, tasks? Yeah. So prioritizing again, I don't think, I don't even teach people like, you know, you hear New Year's, New Year's resolutions and it, they never work because even a priority I set at the beginning of January probably isn't going to be the exact same priority by March because things change. Now, if you say, look at the big picture, well, my family, my health, of course, those are priorities, but you have to dive deeper into it. What are you trying to accomplish this year? That is a priority and that needs to have space on your calendar. So I think priorities change, checking in with yourself every quarter, at least to decide. Maybe I decided I wanted to run a 5k, the 5k is passed. Now I'm replacing that priority with something new. So you're always evolving, but things that you can actually get excited about, right? Instead of just the mundane. Yes, I know I need to grow my business. Yes, I need to go on a date night. Yes, I need to be a good mom. We know this. But what else can you set as a priority to get excited about? Because that's when you're living with intentionality and that's when you're looking forward to your your weeks ahead. So I just think time, like pausing, right? That morning routine, morning routine is a pause before the day starts. Okay. I love that. And I'm taking notes in my <laughs> head. <laughs> so I can live more intentionally as well. I really yeah. love that. So you also, you mentioned all the things that you do um, earlier in the episode. You are also hosting a retreat. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So it's funny because I started a mastermind like three years ago um, and it was just weird. I wanted to be part of a mastermind and I decided I was going to create it. So I ended up having like this feeling to invite these these girls into my mastermind. So it started as that, but then as it evolved, we kept talking about how we needed to get away to like, like we're talking about right now in this episode to live with intentionality, to just take a break. Like when I'm in my everyday life, raising kids and cleaning the house and running to work, I can't even break away to think about what I want. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was the word, it was just so funny because the word focus kept coming up and she's like, we need time to focus. We need time to focus. And so we decided to create the focus retreat and it's me and two other coaches who also have, you know, podcasts and Amy's an author and Lori Beth has this massive um, homeschooling following and they're just beautiful, beautiful spirits that I, I love and adore. And we launched it last year and it's in Harrodsburg, Kentucky at this place called Shaker Village, which is like the perfect place for women to go and focus. It's serene. There's acres and acres of land. There's animals, which I personally love. I was like every day talking to the little donkey as I was walking into the building. I'm like, he's so cute. Oh my gosh. But it's beautiful. The food is amazing. It's in the fall where the leaves are changing. It's gorgeous. I had never been there before until last year. And I was like in shock. And then the night before the retreat starts, we have a VIP night at Amy's Lake House, which is absolutely stunning. So we did it last year. It was awesome. This year, it's September 25th through the 27th. And I'm telling you, every woman that comes is like a just an amazing person, a powerhouse ready to collab, re ready to learn and grow and evolve. And we believe in community over networking. So we believe in like getting to know the woman before we network and collab, because I feel like, you know, we've gone to networking events and it's kind of like, blah, blah, blah. I want to get a deeper connection with somebody. I want to know why they're doing what they're doing. And then I want to figure out all the ways I can support them. And so this year we're really focusing on like hands-on breakout sessions where we are planning our businesses and our lives. And we're walking away 
with a concrete plan to to put into our business in the upcoming year, which, you know, in September it's, you know, Q4. So you're really thinking that way anyways about the next year. And it's just awesome. We have food, we go out in the town, we go shopping, we have music, we dance, we sing, we just have fun. It's awesome. So anybody that's interested, you can just go to the focusretreat.com and grab your ticket. I mean, bring your, bring a girlfriend, bring a sister or come alone. There was a lot of women that came alone last year and now we have this new group of friends. So it's really fun. All right. That definitely sounds like something that's fun and relaxing and a much needed getaway, especially if you're running a business, if you're a yes. mom, if you're a wife and if you're a caretaker, whatever you do in your life, that <laughs> definitely sounds like something that would be great for any woman to attend. It's okay. amazing. And it's, it will fill your soul. That's the main goal. You'll just walk away. I felt so filled up when I left there and I'm one of the speakers, but we really do get to be intimate with the entire group. You know, it's amazing. I love it. Okay. So now I have a very important question to ask you. Okay. What are some of your favorite organizing products? So one of my favorite products, and I actually now have, um, collaborated with the designer and it's, I sell it on my website. It's called the rapid gift bag organizer. It's, it's, you know, I get a lot of, um, like companies ask me to test out their products a lot and it's, I never recommend anything unless I feel like it's worth the money because I hate wasting money. It's just one of my things that I don't want my clients to either. So I got this gift wrap organizer probably about six years ago and it still hangs in my spare bedroom closet. It literally holds all of my gift wrap supplies in this much space, literally about eight inches of space. And it hangs on a hanger. The zipper's never broke. It's never ripped. It's never tore. So I, I love the designer. And I said, you know what? I want to carry this exclusively. And he agreed. So that's my real, one of my favorite because it was worth the money. I think it's like $40. Um, and then my other favorite company for organizing products right now is the Polish Jar. And it has, <laughs> it sounds so funny, but it has like a lot of cool containers. But one of my favorite products is their spice containers because they're like, bamboo lids, glass bottles, adorable labels. They work for every spice collection. I love that product. And then they also have these, you can buy shampoo, conditioner, hand soap, dish soap, anything with the person's name on it. So it can be like the berries, right? And you can give that for a gift item and it just looks super cool. And it's a unique gift. So I love the polish jar too. That's my, fa my second favorite. Those sound like some really interesting items. I'll have to check it out. Usually yeah. we kind of like the same things, hangers, clear containers, things like that. But I need to go and check out those things because yes, I have to. Heard of them before, it's so. so fun. I have them on my website on Jennifer Ford Berry. And it's like okay. at the bottom of offers. I also have an Amazon store with other products that I like, but I really think I love to first um, you know, promote a smaller company than Amazon. So, right. Yeah, I, I got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> perfect. All right. So final question. Can you tell us, um, what is your greatest professional achievement? I would say my greatest professional achievement is publishing five books. I, I never thought I would even write one book and the fact, I mean, my fifth book came out last year, make room, and it's just, been a ride, an absolute ride. And even just having to negotiate publishers and all of behind the scenes, I didn't know what I was doing at first. And I feel like it's helped me grow as a businesswoman to know my own worth and to negotiate for myself. And even the, I had the same publisher for, you know, many, many, many years in the last book that came out, I wanted it to have like a Christian spin on it. And my publisher was not going for it. They didn't want me to write a Christian book. And so I actually got a lawyer and took back all of my rights for my books so that I could follow what my heart was telling me to do and went and found another publisher for this book. And I feel like to me, I'm proud of that because I didn't just do what someone else wanted me to, to do. You know, there was many offers that came through and I was like, no, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. And I have to take a lot, a lot of time away from my family in order to write. And I was like, 
you know what, this is what I want to write. And so I encourage anybody that is in business, always follow your own heart and stay in your own lane because that's what makes our businesses unique. I think we're all set here with a purpose. And if we change for someone else, we're not going to stay on track for what our unique purpose is. And so I'm just happy that I've been able to do that. And it's scary, right? When you don't do what your publisher wants you to do, but I don't regret it at all. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us and being on the show today. I really appreciate your time. Can you tell everyone how they can find out more information about you? Well, thank you, Naima, for having me so much. I love talking to you. I love that we have the same middle name <laughs> and that we both love organizing. Yes. Um, so they can find out anything about me on my website, on Instagram. It's always Jennifer Ford Berry. Um, and I am really right now into promoting people to work with me online because I can't be in everyone's home. I can't be face to face with everybody. And I have spent the last two and a half years just pouring all the information and content and experience I've had from writing books, working with people for 20 years into programs and courses online so that I can keep on teaching it no matter where they live. So definitely check it out. There's lots of free content on there also. And if anybody has questions, feel free to reach out. I'd love to talk to you. Thank you all for joining us. Be sure to tune in next time for an all new episode.